Before I discuss this, this first topic of the day, I just want to give parents uh, a warning that the next few minutes of conversation is of an adult nature and you might want to remove uh, your children from the room if you feel that would be appropriate for you. Now, I want to bring your attention to a clip that I came across online this week which has now been watched almost two and a half million times. And although it could be dismissed as a one-off from just one woman, I, I just can't help but suspect that it is a signpost to potentially horrific social change of which we just need to be aware. It features a sex therapist who works for the Keystone State of Pennsylvania in America, which describes itself as proudly founded in 1681 as a place of tolerance and freedom. Now, don't get me wrong, tolerance, coexisting with people who are causing no harm but are not like us, is good. Freedom, if we mean being the architects of our own destiny as far as possible, that is also, of course, good. But I fear that the clip I'm about to show you might be the start of an insidious creep towards the normalising of sexual contact with children. Have a listen. Folks, my name is Miranda. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a licensed professional counsellor and sex therapist in Erie, Pennsylvania. And today I want to talk about minor attracted persons. And I want to talk about minor attracted persons because they are probably the most vilified population of folks in our culture. There's a reason for that. Now, when this lady talks about minor attracted persons, what she means is pedophiles. The Latin derivation of that word, of course, is phil, to love, and ped, child. But, of course, as we know, there is no love involved in the damaging behaviours which quite, we quite rightly deem criminal. She goes on. Most folks are making incorrect assumptions about them without actually knowing much about them. And those assumptions create harm for an already marginalized population. You see, it's one thing to argue that abusers require help. They do. You will never hear me advocating castration or public floggings. Remember, abusers are commonly former victims themselves. But... There is a difference between arguing for understanding and a system which manages or contains these people and blaming others for judging them or trying to make us feel guilty for rejecting in the harshest terms such horrific acts. We are all people first with many different facets or parts of ourselves and this includes folks who are attracted to minors. Do you see? Do you see where this is going? You may think a minor attracted person is wrong because they are not the same as you, but everyone has rights. There's no such thing as good or bad anymore. Just a murky moral relativity in which you don't have a right to judge someone who is different to you. Funnily enough, I think we need a very clear, firm line in the sand when it comes to the sexual interference of children. Successful civilizations are built upon the protection of the next generation. A society which does not pride itself on keeping kids happy and safe is one which is heading for annihilation. Sexual assault, unwanted, coercive or forceful contact of any form is the most effective way of psychologically damaging a young person in both the long and the short term. Some survivors will cope better than others, but a full recovery from such violations is rare. Let's talk about what a minor attracted person is or who they are. This term simply means that the person has an enduring sexual or romantic attraction to minors. They've not chosen this attraction, just as the rest of us have not chosen whatever our attraction is. You don't get to choose to be heterosexual or to be gay or, or whatever you are. So there she's trying to humanize paedophiles. And in some ways, that is okay. Like truly understanding what drives people to act so abnormally is critical if we want to stop future crimes. But aligning a criminal act with normal sexual preferences is potentially very dangerous. She makes no effort to illuminate the abnormality of paedophilia. She makes no mention that it is most commonly the result of learned behaviours, a pathological, psychological disorder, which people like this therapist are apparently seeking to normalise. And this is from TikTok a social media platform owned by the Chinese government and aimed at children. Imagine your daughter 
or granddaughter experiencing unwanted molestation from an adult and just wondering if she should bring this to someone's attention. Over 90% of child victims know their offender, with almost half of them being a family member. But suddenly, this poor child wonders whether she should complain. Maybe this is OK. Maybe this is just like being gay or, or straight. Maybe she doesn't want to be judged for making a fuss. I don't know. Maybe there are people hoping that by the time the guest list to the Epstein-Maxwell parties is released, we'll have all bought into the idea that paedophiles are simply minor attracted people who deserve our understanding. So all I'm saying is let us just be awake to this phenomenon, shall we? And keep talking to our children about what's right and what is very, very wrong.